Welcome to this tutorial I'm going to be doing with you today on the knee joint. And please remember that this is an Anatomy 1 focused tutorial, so I will only be covering the major points associated with it. Which leads me to say our knee is actually the largest joint in our body, which also leads to it being the most complex. So it's the largest and most complex joint we have. Before we get too into detail, let's just recap the most important thing we know about joints. And that is that they are points in the body where bones interact with each other. So joints equal where bones interact. We can also call them articulations. So I've already said that the knee is the most complex joint in the body, but now I'm going to talk about why. Our knee consists of only one joint cavity, however within that space there are actually three joints, an exception to our usual rule when we originally described synovial joints. The joints are between the tibia and the distal end of the femur, known together as the tibiofemoral joints, and are located medially and laterally, above the meniscus of the tibia, but below the femoral condyles. And I'm just going to show that here. So we have the distal femur connecting to the tibia and the same on the lateral side. So we have our medial and we're also going to have our lateral. So that is the first two articulations involved in the knee joint. And our last joint is located between the patella and distal end of the femur and is known as our femoropatellar joint. I'm just showing that here as well. So the patella is going to interact with the femur where I'm showing here. And I'll just show you in another view as well. So we can see in this area here the patella is going to interact with the femur and that forms our femoropatellar joint. Now this area that I'm just outlining in the purple here is the meniscus of the knee and the meniscus of the knee is important in that it prevents side to side rocking of the femur on the tibia and it also pre uh, prevents certain motions of uh, the knee joint during certain stages of flexion and extension and we're going to talk about that just in a second here. So it prevents side to side rocking of the femur on the tibia. Alright now moving on to how we actually classify these joints. Our femoropatellar joint is classified as a plane joint and mainly allows the patella to glide across the surface of the femur during knee flexion. So it's a plane joint and it allows gliding. So it's just going to move up and down this axis here as we flex the knee and showing you on this other drawing over here as well. The tibiofemoral joint acts mainly as a hinge, but it's hard to classify due to the complex nature of the knee, as the femur has a medial and lateral condyle that interacts with the surface of the tibia. This means that the joint is known as bicondylar. Now small amounts of side to side rotation is allowed when the knee is bent, but upon full extension, this is largely hindered by the meniscus, so it's going to prevent that rotation during extension. And I'll just quickly point out as well that that third drawing on the right hand side there is a superior view of the tibia, so showing the meniscus. Now thinking about these movements that I've just described, we need to know that the femoropatella and tibiofemoral joints are diarthrotic being freely movable, with the femoropatella being non-axial or a plane joint, and the tibiofemoral being biaxial, with flexion and extension permitted, along with a small amount of rotation. Due to the complexity of the knee, several bursa are associated with it. Now bursa are something that we haven't actually discussed yet, and we'll just talk about it briefly here. 
Bursa are small fibrous sacs that are regularly associated with synovial joints. Uh, simply put, there are fibrous sacs with an inner synovial membrane and synovial fluid associated with it. Now they're designed to stop damage caused by friction and bones rubbing together. And I'll just highlight the bursae of the knee joint here. And in a later video, we will also have a look at the glenohumeral joint located at the shoulder. And we'll discuss the difference between a bursa and a tendon sheath. As you can also see, there are many different ligaments and tendons associated with the knee joint that I'm highlighting now, and we will go into much more detail with those in a musculoskeletal video. And keep in mind that these highly complex joints are not immune to injury, and we will talk about common injuries of the knee in the next video. And for now, that's everything you'll need to know about the knee joint. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.